Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. I have got two incredible pizza recipes for you. Two different flavors cooked in two different ways. They are gonna be absolutely delicious. Okay, so all good pizzas start with an amazing bread dough, and here is how I make it. So now you know how to make a delicious bread dough. And actually, once you've mastered that, you can turn it into a loaf, you can make pizzas, you could make focaccia, you can do all kinds of things with it. I've got my pizza dough here. It is proved up beautifully. Now, once you've mastered this, you can turn it into not only pizza, you could turn it into a loaf, bread rolls, bagels, you know, you name it. You can turn it into that because once you've got an amazing dough, possibilities are endless. Now, this has proved in the fridge overnight. So can you see how sort of developed, sometimes with bread dough, You've got to knead it and work it to develop the gluten structure in it, or you can leave it overnight and it will develop itself. Okay, so that is kind of what you want your dough to look like. So let me just put that to one side and we're going to talk toppings, okay? Right, let's make the sauce. Now, we're going to do mascarpone, cured ham, chili, and basil. Beautiful combination. It's a Bianco pizza, so it's a white pizza. But I'm also gonna show you how to make a delicious margarita pizza with fennel. I love fennel. Beautiful fennel seeds with tomato. It just works so well. So I'll show you how to make the basic sauce, okay? So I've got a tin of chopped tomatoes. Now, they're not, they're not anything posh. They're just a tin of to chopped tomatoes from the supermarket. We're just gonna pour them through a sieve. I think I may well have actually told you about this before. When we did the three different fish parcels, we made a sort of a bouillabaisse, Marseille style tomato sauce. And we drained the excess liquid out, so we just have pulp. Um, but if you, like, if I just shake it like that, Crikey. you can see how much comes out, yeah? All we want is the tomato. We don't want all this particularly. Okay, so. Once we've just got rid of the excess, we'll put it into that bowl there. All right. And then we're very simply going to make a nice tomato sauce. So I've got a grater here. I'm going to grate half a clove of garlic in here. If you love garlic, put more in. It's up to you. We all know who doesn't. <laughs> I'll, I'll convert him one day. I promise. A little bit of dried oregano will help with the flavor. If you haven't got dried oregano, just use mixed herbs, Italian seasoning, something like that is absolutely fine. A little bit of salt, not too much. A little bit of pepper. And I like to put a little bit of olive oil into my sauce. I'm sure Carlos, being Spanish, will agree with me on that. Yeah, thumbs up. So a little bit of olive oil in there. And that is our tomato sauce. This could also stir through pasta beautifully. 
Really, really simple. We've got tons of pasta recipes on our website. Scan the QR code if you want the recipe for today. Go to petersidwell.com or scan that code along there. Um, but there are tons of other recipes. Right. Okay, so that is our tomato sauce. Put that to one side. We've got our fennel. I want to do a little bit of chili. I need to chop that up. Let's just grab our board. We'll get everything ready so that once we get onto the dough, we're ready to go. Okay, so a little bit of chili. Put your chopping board this way, Pete. There we go. Yep. Chopping board police at the minute. It's all about Emily. So I'm just going to cut into the chili like so. Turn it over and do the same again. So it's kind of got like strands. Do you see that? The little strands, like little fingers. Crimp it together and just cut it. And they'll all go into lots of little pieces. I would always suggest using fresh chili for this recipe. It's so much nicer um, than dried chili flakes. Powder, I don't touch at all. Do you not? No, don't use chili powder. It's too strong. It's too harsh and aggressive because it's... It's all the seeds, it's all the chili. You know, we spend all that time trying to get rid of it and just have the, the fruit, if you like. Um, and I just think it's so much nicer. It's, I just, I don't know, I just find chili powder very aggressive. Mm. Chili flakes can be, I think, if you put too much in. Yeah, probably. chili flakes are better, I think, but. Oh, well, you can smell the fruitiness of that. Yeah, chili, though. fresh chili is not anywhere near as hot as dried because obviously it's been dehydrated. Okay, so we've got those. Let me just get my fennel seeds. Got them. Right, so let's talk dough. All right, pizza dough. Can I move that to there, Emily? It's in my way a bit. As well. hey? You can push it in, in a bit as well. Yeah, right, so we're gonna get a little bit of flour. There we go. And a little bit of polenta. Okay, so this will give us a nice this means that when you put the pizza on whatever you're baking on, it kind of rolls on um, because it's sort of, it's got texture, okay? So I've mixed those. I'm going to put those to one side and then we're just going to get our dough out, okay? So I just proved it in one of my stainless steel boxes. I love these containers. You can get them from cookserveandenjoy.com. They're really good for storing food in the fridges, storing leftovers, freezer and you can actually put them in the microwave who knew clever lot of masterclass then right so we've got our pizza dough this is a 500 gram batch so i started with 500 grams of flour seven grams of yeast 10 grams of salt 300 mils of water mix it together knead it for five to ten minutes and you've got this stored in the fridge overnight and you've got i would say four portions of pizza Okay, so you squeeze it in the middle, like so, and then do the same again, and just sort of squeeze it like that. What camera are we working to? Uh, the wide. Middle one? Yeah. So I'll do it again, just squeeze it, and you end up with pretty much four portions. So if you're a family of four, it's a 500 gram batch. Get the recipe, scan the code, you know the routine. Okay, so we are going to make our first pizza. Now, here is my new little toy. We like this, don't we, Emily? Yeah. So Sage have brought out a home pizza oven. Now, pizza ovens need to get to 400 degrees to cook a beautiful pizza. And these ovens, as good as they are, do not get that hot, okay? But these little bad boys do. So my theory is, in the UK, if you buy a good quality pizza from the supermarket to cook at home, it's about a fiver, isn't it? Yeah, for a decent-sized decent pizza. pizza. So if there's a family of four of you, and you, that's 20 quid, if you do that every week, that's a grand yeah. on pizza. These are not a grand, all right? So if you love pizza, it might be something you want to buy. Do as you please. I love pizza, so I bought one. I bought it on eBay, actually, for half the price, out of sheer curiosity. But Sage have nailed it in terms of um, a good pizza oven indoors that works. They have the key to it as being indoors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a lovely pizza oven outside, but look at it. It's pouring down rain today. Not going out there. Or if it's windy, it's quite hard to get up to temperature to get the pizza oven. So 
I got this on eBay. Have a look. Have a dabble. However, I've also got an alternative that's 10 quid. So there is another, <laughs> there is another way. But we'll do this one first, and then we'll make the other one. So, start by just pressing your pizza dough down, okay? Use your fingertips. Always start with the shape you want to finish with. So you want a round, you start with a round. And just use your fingertips and then pick it up and just run your hands around the crust like so. Can you see that all right, Emily? Yeah. Yeah, good. And you're just kind of manipulating it a little bit. I'm just getting it almost to like a pita bread size, like so, yeah? And then we turn it over, go forwards, turn it round, go forwards, go round. And I'm trying to develop a crust, yeah? And then I'm stretching it at the same time, okay? I have no issue with you using a rolling pin, all right? It is not a big deal to me. There it is. Or you need to use a bottle of wine, use a bottle of wine, use whatever you've got. Give it a roll, give it a turn. And because we're using a mixture of polenta or ground semolina and flour, it doesn't stick, okay? So get it and just keep moving it, all right? There we go. There. So for me, that's a good pizza size. Give it a little stretch. Because it's pizza, because it's bread dough, it naturally wants to shrink back again. You know, you do that, it wants to go back that way. So you just have to kind of take charge of it and just waggle it, yeah? Don't just stretch it, because it'll tear. Encourage it, yeah? Like that. That's it, you see? We're we keeping you up, Emily. Late night last night. <laughs> right, do you see how it's moving like that? That's where you want to be. If it's not moving around, how could you expect to get it on this or onto whatever you're doing? Okay, so we have pizza number one. What pizza would you like in this oven? Bianco. You want the Bianco, do you? Yeah. You're all about the Bianco, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah. yeah. Right, so little bit of flour and polenta. Get your pizza peel level with your pizza. Like that. Yeah, and slide it on. No professional there, Pete. No, if it all goes wrong, we can open a pizza place, Emily. Yeah. Right, okay, so mascarpone. It's like an Italian cream. It's thick, rich, delicious. Really, really good there. Is that where you want it? Hmm? Back. Back. Yeah. There. Keep her happy. <laughs> okay, so you just don't put tons on. I think the mistake a lot of people make is they overload a pizza. Um, and actually, what you're better off doing is putting less on but better quality, in my opinion. So we've got five bits of mascarpone there. I'm going to put another one in the middle. And then I'm just going to use my spoon just to press it down a little bit. So the idea is that you get this lovely bread dough. And then you get these little creamy wells and reservoirs, yeah? Tried this pizza out last week, didn't we? You liked it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, this was a good one. Okay, so we've got fresh chili. Don't go mental. Don't blow your head off. You just want little touches of it. You just, every slice, you want a little bit. Extra virgin olive oil. And that will just kind of marry together. And this, is a, this plays a part to help make the sauce to go on top makes it rich makes it delicious now we've got we've got creamy we've got warm we now want a little bit of salty and crisp so we're going to take some nice cured italian ham so super thin and just lay it on tear it up lay it on you want it to crisp up in the oven so don't sort of lay it flat otherwise it'll just melt into the mascarpone you want a little crispy bits and gnarly bits so sort of fold it and Leave it like that so that, that top bit goes super crispy. And the fat that sits on the ham, you want that to melt into the top of the pizza. So for me, that's probably enough. Yeah? Now, this is optional. I like capers on mine. You caper fan, Emily? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say yes, because they're going on. Yeah. <laughs> capers are just like a little pickled bud of a, of a tree. Tree? A plant? A bush? Um, and they just add a little bit of acidity, which is what this is missing, in my opinion. 
Okay, so mini capers I think are better for this so that they're not too big. You could put olives on if you want or don't have to put anything on. Okay, and then pepper, no salt because you've got salt from the ham. So a little bit of black pepper and that is ready to go in the oven, okay? Give it a little shake, make sure it's gonna come off. Okay, my oven is hot. That can go in, all right? That will cook in a couple of minutes. It's gonna give us enough time to make the other pizza in the other method. Right, I'm gonna show you another way of making amazing fresh pizza. So using a pizza stone, now they're quite easily available, they're about a tenner, they're not that expensive. The secret, in my opinion, is to preheat the stone, get it really, really hot, while you do all the kneading and everything else like that, we'll get the pizza shape ready to go, and then I will show you how it works. So, exactly the same way as we did before in terms of rolling the pizza out, just roll, get your pizza. Always start with the shape you wanna finish with. So we're gonna make a really beautiful, we're gonna play on margarita, okay? It is a margarita apart from the fennel seeds because I just think they just add something different. And I made these a few weeks ago, actually, at an event. And everyone was like, oh, that's amazing. What, what can I taste? It's different. And it's just fennel seeds. Fennel seeds and tomato are like best friends. So they're a nice, easy way to add. You could also shave fresh fennel on if you wanted. Super easy to do. Right. So as before, make sure you can move your pizza around, you see? That's what our polenta needs to do, or our semolina. Give us that barrier to be able to move everything around. Okay, so time for the pizza stone. Right, let's just grab that. Check my other pizza. Oh, can you see that, Emily? Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh. Looks so good. Right, let's just give that a second. We'll get this one in and then that'll be ready to go. Right, pizza stone. So I'm just putting it on my chopping board so that um, it doesn't burn the worktop, okay? Right, okay, pizza stone is red hot, which is why it's on the chopping board. I don't wanna burn my lovely kitchen, do I? So we now need to get that onto there. And I would say the best way to do it is fold it in half, fold it in half again, Give it a little shake, lay it on the hot stone and unfold it, okay? And then just give it a little stretch because it's going to start cooking straight away, all right? And then just run your fingers around the edges so that that will help encourage the crust to puff up in the oven carefully because it's hot stone. There we go. We all right with that, Emily? Right, where's my sauce? Here's my sauce. So because we drained the moisture out of here, we've just got fresh tomato flavor, all right? And we're not overloading this pizza. We've got good fresh flavors going on and that, that to me is the secret. Okay, and then we're gonna get our fennel seeds and we're just gonna scatter a few on there. Don't go mad, all right? Just a few is enough and then we'll get some mozzarella now I'm going to talk to you about mozzarella in a second. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so when you're making pizza, if you use the fresh mozzarella ball, it's delicious, but there's a lot of moisture in there. And what you'll find is when it comes out the oven, it's got like a milky kind of liquid to it. Um, it's okay, but just when you're using if you are using fresh mozzarella ball, just give it a really good squeeze before you actually um, put it on the pizza. But we're going to use like a low moisture mozzarella. And you tend to sort of get it in like, um, like a loaf shape rather than a, a fresh mozzarella ball. So I'm just gonna cut some up, that'll do. And then we just tear it up and just place it. You could use grated mozzarella as well if you wanted to. That's fine. It's up to you really. But I quite like to use this because you get like little wells and reservoirs. And then I'm gonna pop some extra virgin olive oil onto the pizza so that everything kind of marries together. 
That's it. And then a little bit of black pepper. And that's it, it is ready for the oven. Now I've got my oven on like top element and fan so that we get as high a heat and a direct heat on the top of the pizza as we can um, because the stone's already red hot because it's preheated for 30 minutes. So this is gonna go in 200 degrees, top element and fan, give it about 10, 12 minutes. Right, pizza number one is ready. Look at that. Oh, pop that onto there. We'll just leave it to one side. Now go and get the other one as well. Oh, that looks really good, that. Right, here we go. Now, because the stone was hot when we put it in the oven, it should just slide around. To me, that sounds like a nice crispy bottom. So let's just pop that on to there. Be very careful with the stone though, because they keep hot for a long time, okay? So, but they are really, really good at creating that very dry heat that you want for a pizza. Right, okay, so for me, fresh basil. I always put fresh basil on at the end. I think it's such a delicate herb. Um, if you put it in in the cooking process, you just kind of lose it, all right? So just fresh basil leaves and then just i wouldn't even cut them i would just pick them when you need them not before because they're so delicate they'll just start to sort of wilt and lose their amazing flavor okay and the same on this one there we go and then you've got a finished pizza i think with a final drizzle of olive oil. I tend to go around the edges on the crust if you can. And then the same on that one. And that is how to make two absolutely delicious pizzas. What are you gonna try first, Emily? Oh, surprise me. I know exactly which one you want. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now remember, if you want the recipes, please scan the QR code along the bottom. It will take you to petersidwell.com. You can get all my recipes there. I will also put a link. If you're like me and a bit obsessed with pizzas and you want to find out where you can get one of these from, I'll put a link on the recipe to where you can buy these from. Um, if you want the pizza stone, you can go to cookserveandenjoy.com and get them there. Really easy to get hold of. Get all the gear, even the pizza cutters, the lot. But thank you very much for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure sharing these recipes with you. Please share the video with your friends and family. Get into the kitchen and make these. They are amazing pizzas.